I was always like a healthy eater, but then it was just kind of the the binging, the emotional tie to food that would mm-hmm. would bring me down and start that cycle over. And it was such a like like thought about carnivore, and I was always like, there's no way I could do that. There's like way too many things that I am not willing to give up. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching our videos. If you'd like to support us some more, you can explore our homemade natural skincare products at purelytallow.com. Thank you so much for supporting my small business. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Carnivore Revolution. I'm Serena, and today we're talking to my friend Kristen. We met on Instagram. Kristen is a fitness trainer and a nutrition enthusiast, and she has amazing arms. Oh, that's funny. Hello, everyone. (laughs) Thank you so much for doing this with me. I thought this would be fun. You haven't been a carnivore for like an extreme amount of time, so... This is good for people who are just kind of getting started and thinking like, where is the light at the end of this tunnel? When does this start to become easy for me? When does this start to become second nature? And so I thought um, also because of your fitness background and stuff that this would be a great place for people to come to get all kinds of information about carnivore, getting started and the fitness journey along the way. So let's start with your story. I like to start with like where this came from for you, um, where you were before this and what brought you to carnivore. So first of all, well, I'm a day, I'm day 197 okay. today. Okay. Got it. Is like, I've never stuck to anything this long in my life. Like I've yeah. always been one of those that like tries something and then throws in the towel, like just a cycle, you know, like, yes. So I don't know, like weird issues, emotional type ties to food started like when I was much younger in middle school. So it's always kind of been one of those cycles that I've dealt with. I've always been very like athletic and into fitness, but then like disciplined in that area, but then food and like binging and that kind of stuff has always been part of just a habit, like part of life, like for decades, Mm -hmm. like, yeah high school to whatever. I'm like 40, I'm the line 47 (laughs) for so long. And I think that was the hardest, like everything I tried, I could like do for a little while. And I was, I was always like a healthy eater, but then it was just kind of the, the binging, the emotional tie to food that would, Mm -hmm. would bring me down and start that cycle over. And it was such a like emotional and physical drain. And, um, Mm -hmm. like I, like thought about carnivore and I was always like there's no way I could do that there's like way too many things that I am not willing to give up and then last April I just finally was like I've tried everything else like Mm -hmm. I've tried everything and I can't get past that like first little bit of time of like feeling good and I had already like made a lot of changes I just hadn't always you know there's still like that I had that sugar type stuff in there processed Mm -hmm. so I would like eat really well and then have a day that would just be like, oh, okay, whatever. We're just, I can't deal with life right now. So I'm just going to eat all the junk in the house. Like all yep. the stuff I buy for my kids that I'm like, that's for them. I'm not going to touch it. Just do it. So mm-hmm. I just figured, you know, carnivore is so like, I just like that it's so simple. It just takes certain food groups off the table. Like that's not going to be an issue for me because I'm not even mm-hmm. going to go there. So I told myself I'm giving myself 60 days. And just going to see what changes and how I feel. And if I have that emotional change. And um, I think the biggest thing, like when I first got it, I remember, I just remember the horrible headache, like the first week, like (laughs) migraine, like three days, like, okay, I, once I get through this, but once I got through that hard part, I was just so motivated to just see like what could be. I had done the hard part. I mean, that was my life, like going through the first hard days, you know, like not feeling well, whatever. Like I have been through that cycle dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Mm -hmm. So just getting through that and seeing like what else is out there. And then after I got through like 30 days, I'm like, I, I haven't been like, I know that sometimes people still deal with like binging or like emotional type stuff. Like once you're Mm -hmm. on, or two like that kind of was there but for me for some reason that was gone so it was once I like really limited carbs and just focused on like fat and protein which was like I always ate a lot of protein the whole like getting enough fat thing was new for me but yeah. um it just it just changed it just helped me I didn't binge I didn't have like 
I mean, I still have those random thoughts. Like I really want to go sit on the couch and like not talk to anyone and eat a dozen cookies right now and not tell anyone, but they're kind of there and I let them be there. And then I'm like, no, that's not, it's not worth it. Cause I know how gross and awful I feel the next day. So loving it. I feel good. Energy wise. It's great. There's a little bit of backlash, like from, yeah, not out. Everyone approves of my choices, but I think that when you're confident and you know what you're doing feels right for you, that those comments don't bother you as much. Um, even if they're from somebody that you truly love and you know it's coming from a caring place, you're mm -hmm. like, well, I'm going to keep giving the blood work. I'm going to keep making sure that I'm healthy, but I feel really great. So I'm going to keep doing it. So don't, don't worry about me. <laughs> worry about yourself. And I think the hardest part sometimes is like family events. It's like not going to eat what everyone else is eating, but you just kind of have to focus on the other things. Like focus on the good conversations, focus on just like, loving your family members and mm -hmm. not what's on your plate or who's judging you or whatever. And that was kind of a big issue with me. I always, I always like ate whatever to make people happy. And now it's like, yes, I just, I choose not to do that right now. I'm going to give it mm -hmm. some time. Maybe someday I always say like, maybe next time, but yeah. Yeah. And I, I love how you couldn't find the right words to describe how you feel like it just makes everything better. Like, yeah, there it's like, I've heard people call it like, it's that carnivore Zen. It's just mm -hmm. like all of a sudden the pieces fit into their places. And for me, part of it, um, I think this is kind of what you were saying, but you didn't use the same words as I always use is the reason carnivore works for me. And the reason that it's so easy be is because it compartmentalizes everything for me. Like, yeah. right. It takes all of the other things off the table for me. And so everything that I can eat fits in this one box mm -hmm. and I don't eat things outside this box. I eat animal products. And the things outside that box are not animal products. Therefore, I do not eat them. Don't you think that's it? Like it just compartmentalizes everything. I think that's it. Like it just makes it so much easier. Like even when I'm grocery shopping, there's certain things that I would always be like, ooh, I wonder if I should get this or not. But compartmentalize, that's like the best word ever. Thanks. <laughs> I love it. It's like, it's just like, I just described it like that one day to somebody like it just, it makes things, and I don't know if I'm an A personality, B personality. I don't, I don't know those kinds of things. I don't get into that kind of stuff, but I'm sure there's a personality type that compartmentalizes things <laughs> and that makes things easier for them. So you right. mentioned like you've done all the things, you know, I'm, I'm the same way. I've done all the things. Juicing. Juicing. Yep. yep. Yes. Juicing. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Right. Everything. I think I, I did it like one time and was successful. And the rest of the times I paid all the money and made it through like one day and just like wasted the stuff. I'm like, what am I doing? Like, the amount of money I spent on random pills, cleanses, whatever was good for you. Yes. Such a joke. <laughs> yeah. So was your, when you switched to carnivore, was your family kind of burned out? Like for me, when I switched, my family was just like, okay, great. Here we go. How long is this going to last? What's this going to be like? How is this going to affect us? <laughs> like, do you think your family was kind of burned out at first? Like, great. She'll do this for a couple of weeks. You know, I think that like, I really internalized all my issues and things I was trying like I never shared openly like okay this is day one I'm gonna really try this right. like so I did it without really saying like all right guys mom's going carnivore like we're doing it like I think I would maybe mention like hey I'm gonna try this thing um and I kind of just went with it but yeah they were probably like oh now she's on another kick you know mm -hmm. but but this this has stayed <laughs> Right, 197 days is a pretty good run. Yes, I know. It's so exciting. I'm like, I'm a party on day 200. Right. So, what kind of um, what kind of things have gotten better for you besides the food issues? Are there other things? I mean, you know, we're both getting up there in age here. I'm 51. You're 47. So, like, there are things that people our age have, like achy joints, IBS, you know, Crohn's disease, other autoimmune diseases arthritis, there, there are things that people our age have. Do you find that you had any of those things before and are they any better? Yes. Arthritis. I have really bad arthritic, grammatically correct knees that have gotten a lot better. Like they used to ache all the time, like when the weather would change or when I would be like, I was, used to be a marathon runner too. I don't run anymore. I walk the dogs, the weights and walk the dogs. But um, like, so arthritis and just the inflammation, I feel like I just feel so much better. Like there was always at least a couple of days in the week where I would wake up and just be so tired and want to crawl in a hole and like 
pretty much would mentally have to be like, just survive today. You'll feel better the next day. It's just because you like Mm -hmm. ate like crap the day before. So it's just waking up. I mean, there's days when I'm tired, but you know, I haven't gotten enough sleep or whatever, just fatigue, but I just to wake up and just be so excited. Like I feel great today. I ate well yesterday. I fueled well. I'm going for it. And just the mental clarity, I think not being consumed with like, planning you know I'd eat good all week and I'd be like okay what what am I gonna do on Friday night to like yeah <laughs> celebrate were, good all week. Yeah. but just having that off the table and just finding more time to like find other things that make me feel good so the mental like just not beating myself up is such a great feeling yeah it's true I feel the same way and so for things like um like okay so let's let's let me ask you about your kids so you okay. have two twin boys they're 15 years old and so what is that like at your house right now? Is your uh, your family carnivore or not carnivore? And how do you deal with the meals for them? So my family is not carnivore at the current stage in life that we're in, which is very busy. They're just starting high school. So it's like high school football. We're doing practices. We're driving around all the time. So there is quite a bit of um, picking up dinner or like what's in the freezer from Trader Joe's kind of stuff. So they are not carnivore. We do try to, um, you know, have a balanced diet and make sure they get enough protein. And they actually, they've been asking a lot more questions lately because um, I think they just see how like, how good I feel. And they wanna make sure they're getting enough protein and we're do like, you know, like I make some extra stuff that they can have. I do have one that's saying he, he might wanna try it, but I feel like that's, it's kind of, it's hard to navigate that because I do kind of make separate dinners for myself than for them. Sometimes we share just like the protein part of the meal and then they'll have their like salad and their carbs and all that too. But that, that is a bit challenging, but I don't want to push the way that I'm eating on them. If they're Mm -hmm. ready or they want to try certain things, I definitely will be open to it. And I get so excited to share. And I've got my one eating sardines from the air fryer, which is like, I'm so excited. That's awesome. Um, That is very cool. But that that I do feel like that's one of the harder things because I feel like I do kind of feel a little bit secluded in that because I'm like doing different things. But then I also have to be like, well, this is working for me. So I need to just stay on my own path. Yeah. Yeah. And I understand that my kids are older, like yours. Some of mine are older than yours. And I think if my kids were little, I would totally push it on them. But like, for me, it feels like to, to, I can't ruin my relationships with my kids over this, right? Like I want them to be healthier. I want them to eat this way. Um, I don't even think they need to be carnivore. I'd like them to be carnivore for a month. And then if they wanted to add in, you know, some lower carb fruits and vegetables, you know, some low oxalate things and they wanted to do that, I obviously would be fine with just kind of a mostly whole foods diet for them, but I'm not willing to like bash it in, you yeah. know, and, and damage those relationships. I just hope that I'm leading by example. Yes. I think that's perfect. Like that's, th- that's what I want to do too. And I want to like, exp- like expose them little by little, but not be like pushy about it because yeah. I mean, they have to make their own decisions, you know, right. they're they are the ones that like want to yeah experiment with their diet and make those choices anyways yeah so day 197 and have you lost weight you know i have and it was um like initially that was like a part of the what i wanted to do but i also i mean i had always said that like I'd, i'd been really thin in the past and then i'd get bigger like i mean you can go back in the years and you could see like okay, what was, what was Kristen going through in life? Like, what does she look like? But, um, I had always said like the weight doesn't really matter as much. Like I just wanted to not deal with the whole like mental binging, like secretive self-sabotage, like emotional tie to food. Like that was, I mean, if I was 20 pounds heavier and didn't have that to deal with, that was what I wanted. I just wanted that freedom, food freedom. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did, but I have, I have lost quite a bit, but I, did watch a video recently where that kind of like happens and then your body gets used to it. And then you slowly start like getting, you know, gaining a little bit and then finding your balance and whatever. Um, I do eat a lot. I eat like 2,400 calories a day ish. Mm -hmm. And I track just so I can make sure that I am eating enough, but, um, but that was, but it's a really good thing. Like I feel good when I look in the mirror, I'm like, 
Oh, I, this carnivore thing is great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, your arms, come on. I, oh, you're really nice. <laughs> I, I mean, you have the most fabulous arms. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about that. So have you been able to lose weight and build muscle on the carnivore diet? Because you just said you've lost weight, but a lot of people say you can't build muscle without the carbohydrates. So what has that been like for you? I was a gymnast for a really long time. And then I've been a fitness instructor since like 99. So a long time. So I've always been like, I've always had a little bit of, of muscle just because of that's how my like body was mm -hmm. growing up. So I, I actually think that is very helpful when you're younger, like start young. I teach middle school. So I'm like telling my eighth graders, like, listen, kids, now's the time mm -hmm. to start like doing it. Cause when you get older, my age, it's so much harder. I think, I feel like I've gotten a little bit stronger. I've just really tried to lift heavier like before it was a lot of cardio i mean a lot of people go through this i think as we as we age we learn like okay we need to change our focus but before it was a lot of cardio a little bit of weights not heavy just enough to like say i lifted or did strength yes. now it's that's my focus like mm -hmm. different muscle groups each day and then just getting my steps in before it was like i just need to sweat profusely every day and get right. like all this stuff in so strange way i don't know i feel i feel like i've gotten a little bit stronger but it is it takes a little bit more time and patience with your body because you're changing so many other things and stressing it out with so many different other changes it's like be patient but be consistent right. and just don't give up yeah i agree with that it's so hard and especially if we don't see the changes fast enough we always just want to give up um, and that's one of the things for me with carnivore was it makes it so much easier to stick with it. It's the compartmentalization. Mm -hmm. It's the being satisfied with the foods. It's, you know, not being hungry, not feeling bingy usually and things like that. Um, and so I think it's so important that we do stay nourished. And I love that you eat so much because so many people don't eat enough. And that's really hard. If you're not eating enough, it's hard to stick with anything if you're not eating enough. Yes. I feel like it's so hard to stay like motivated or anything when you're like, well, I'm tired and I'm hungry. And now, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah. And I think so, too, like with strength training, you kind of need that voice in your head or someone to be like, you know what? You can go for like three more push ups or you can do a couple more weights because it's really hard to push yourself in that set. I mean, for me personally, sometimes it's like, and I'm a trainer, like I do that for other people. But then when I'm working out on my own, I'm like, oh, Kristen, come on. Like you can, do a little bit heavier or you can do one more rep. So just finding that like self, yeah. self like motivation, like it's, oh, I just did heavier weights and it wasn't that bad. You just got to kind of right. like that step, get out of your comfort zone, I guess. Yeah. And so what about macros? What kind of macros are you doing? Are you paying attention to that? Like fat versus protein and percentage wise? I am. I try to do um, about 60% fat and 40% protein is like my daily goal carbs i limit to like eight grams of carbs or less but um they uh sometimes my days my protein is a little bit higher i just like i'm a volume eater so i feel mm -hmm. like it's helpful mentally if you're like with my protein very high because i feel like full like i get get all that you know rather mm -hmm. than high fat but i'm yeah I'm trying to mm -hmm. um up my fat a little bit more because i know that that is helpful. So yeah, 60, 40 is, I feel like my really good yeah. numbers. That's so about how many grams of fat is that on average for you then with that many calories? Like 150 to 160 ish. Okay. So my protein is really high. Like I'm, I'm trying to actually like not like it's around like 230 a day, which is, is a lot. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to scale it down a little bit, but okay. you know, it, it's hard when it's like, I mean, I love frozen butter, but I'm like, I don't know, I'd rather have like chicken than frozen butter at this point in the day. So yeah. mm -hmm. I'm trying to find that, that balance work in progress. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think about though, um, with people just in the carnivore space? I know you follow a lot of carnivore people like I do. What do you think about that? Like the, the high protein versus the high fat versions and like as a fitness person, as far as building muscle goes, um, because you see so many people and I've always been an advocate of the higher fat carnivore. And for me, I have said for a couple of years that I lose better, I feel better at 85 or 90% fat, even more than that, 
which is ridiculously hard to do. You're basically like, I can't even have one burger when I'm doing that, but I feel leaner. I feel like less inflamed. I feel like that works for me. And I have experimented with extremely low fat Mm -hmm. and I have found that it makes me anxious. Um, So I'm trying to find that kind of middle ground here where I'm getting enough protein, maybe quite a bit more protein than I have been eating, but that makes my macros completely skewed. Like for the last week or so, my macros are basically swapped. Like instead of doing um, like 70, 30, 70% fat, 30% protein, there have been a few days where I'm doing 70% protein, 30% fat, which is completely backwards for me, but I'm just kind of trying it as an experiment. So what are your thoughts on that for people who like, I mean, I used to, I love the high fat version. I feel like as we get older, we need the fat and but I'm just kind of experimenting just to see what are your feelings on that. And I think that's what you need to do, to be honest. And I I want to do what you're doing, but the opposite. Like I want to go really high fat to see how I feel because I've, I've been very hesitant in my journey to do that. I think that it, it just depends on your individual and like mentally where you are. Like the higher protein works for me because that's what I'm used to. And that seeing the volume just being able to eat a lot is yeah. very helpful so I ha- I feel like I'm hesitant to try the really high fat because I'm like oh then I don't get my like big huge plate right. what I'm mm-hmm. used to so that's what's holding me back and I'm pretty like I feel pretty good where I'm at I do like you like if I have too much protein and not enough fat I can totally tell like yeah. grumpy tired like just not not myself, like, oh, okay, we got to up the fats a little bit. Yeah. So I do, I think it's just kind of, I think it's individual, like different bodies are going to go different ways. And depending on how much muscle mass you have, I think you kind of process it differently anyway. And if you, I don't know, like, I do feel like if you have more protein and lesser fat, I don't, I've, if you're okay with it and you feel good with it, then it's like, you do kind of have leaner, but I, I'm just, just starting out too. So I don't know, things are going to start to change, but I think just finding that number that works, I don't know. Like if you're not a volume eater and you feel great on high fat, then do what works for you, but just make sure you're getting enough protein. Right. I don't know. Did that answer your question? I'm kind Yeah, of- you did. And I, and I think so many women who go the high fat route, we don't pay attention to the grams of protein. Like when I'm doing high fat, I'm only paying attention to the percentages and I'm not really paying attention to the amount of protein. So I do wonder, have I been depriving myself of protein? Because there are days as high fats, um, really high fats, and I get criticism for it, but there are days where it's only 30 or 40 grams of protein in the day, sometimes less than that because I'm eating so much fat and I'm trying to not exceed my caloric goals. And Mm -hmm. if I eat more protein to hit my protein goal, then my macros are not going to work out unless I eat more fat and then I'm going to be above my calories. And so it's this whole, and I know there are other women who deal with the same thing. Um, and for volume eaters, especially like, it's really hard to look at a stick of butter and say, this is going to be my meal right now. It's 800 calories. You could, you know, a woman could get by, I mean, it's still pretty low calories at 1600, but you could eat two sticks of butter in a day. Yeah. And it, but for somebody who likes to look at the food and say, this is not very much volume, you might be a little bit full from it because of all the fat, but are you going to feel full? You know what I mean? Right. And are your muscles going to have enough right. to do the work that you want them to do? So that's funny because I don't always, like I look, I check percentages just to make sure I'm like in that range that I want. I'm not like, oh, super, let's, you know, a ton of protein. and But I eat so many calories that my protein would have to be like super, super high to like right. go crazy. But um yeah, I kind of do the opposite of you. Like I look at like the grams, like hit my protein grams and then just keep bumping up fat, bumping up fat till I get that. The percent. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I ought to try that. <laughs> I'm just always like every day I'm like, oh, maybe I'll try what she's doing. Wait, maybe I'll try what she's doing. I long for the point where, because I'm always experimenting with sardine fasting, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So I, I long to get to the point where I'm just really at peace with where I am, have enough muscle mass to feel like I'm going to grow old gracefully and try to maintain that. Um, and I feel like I'm not there yet. And I know so many other women are kind of in the same boat. So you say lift weights heavier than you think you can. And then what about, I know you go for walks. Do you ever recommend sprinting for people? I don't. No. I mean, if people want to do it, go for it. I do teach like a high intensity class once a week, which is not sprinting, but we're like, 
you know, intense intervals for 45 mm -hmm. seconds, but it's a kind of a mix of strength and cardio. But I just feel like if it's going to stress you out and you're going to like really not want to do it, it's not necessary okay. as, as we age. Like I don't do any running at all anymore. I do that class once a week. Other than that, it's just lifting, walking, the elliptical. Like I watch Real Housewives while I'm on the elliptical. So it's enjoyable for me, you know, it's right. like, like that's mom's time. Give me 45 minutes. I got to meet with my Real Housewives on the elliptical. So I, I don't think you need it. Like if you don't want to do it and you hate running, don't do it. Like find something that you like to do that's just going to let you move the way that you want to move. Yeah, absolutely. Kristen, this was a great conversation. I think you give a lot of insight um, for women here on what we should be doing. And, you know, I think that you're a good example of that, especially I love that you're, you haven't been carnivore for like five years. You know, the fact that you're, you know, just how many months is that? Six months, a little more than six months in. Is that oh. right? I love that you're still fairly new and, you know, still trying to figure out even what works for you as amazing as, as this had worked. And so thank you so much for sharing that with everybody. Where can people find you? People can find me on Instagram. Kristen.m.staley. I think that's kind of where I am. I, okay. I think the Facebook, but then I never check yeah. Facebook. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Same way. Yeah. Okay. So you guys go find Kristen. She's an amazing example um, and has such great pictures and little videos on her page. I really appreciate what you do and I appreciate you for spending the time today. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It's been such a pleasure. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on the Carnival Revolution.